What's up, cinephiles, and welcome to another full episode of Monday Movie Pickup. I swear the Criterion sale that they do in uh, both July and November of every year has been killing me lately. Uh, I'm trying to catch up on some of the movies I haven't owned. So these are the uh, new ones that they have from Hitchcock on the Criterion collection, The Lodger which is one of his earliest uh, silent films. Uh, I think the only other one that exists today that came up before this one was The Pleasure Garden, I believe, or The Pleasant Garden. Uh, I, I gotta probably know the names a little better. Um, but The Lodger, uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock in 1927. And yeah, just trying to finish off buying all of his movies. Uh, some of them still don't have Blu-ray releases to this day. And Criterion's starting to pick up on some of the older ones they've released in the past or some new ones. This movie actually comes with a second Hitchcock movie, Downhill, which was made a couple years after he made The Lodger. Uh, so yeah, I'm really into that. Oh, actually, yeah, Downhill came out in 1927, so it was actually the same year. Um, real excited to give both of those a watch. Criterion always does real nice sets. Uh, Notorious, which I actually just watched the other day. I hadn't seen this in years, but uh, yeah, you can pretty much see me in the reflection. But 1946, this isn't one that necessarily people ever talk about when they talk Hitchcock. They don't really put this up there with his greatest movies, uh, but it still is really, really well put together uh, film. And uh, like I said, I've seen it before. I was happy. I was happy to watch it again. They had some pretty good special features. I watched quite a few of them, and yeah, you know, just still trying to finish off the set. I, I felt like I was going to say something else about this, but now I'm forgetting. I'm sure I'll remember later. Um, but then we have Police Story here. Uh, Police Story and Police Story Two, actually. Uh, Jackie Chan. Um, some of the best movies he's ever made. I'm trying to catch up on some of my Jackie Chan movies now. I recently read his book that he wrote, I think in 1998. Uh, really good book, really interesting and crazy life that he's had. Um, I definitely highly recommend that uh, biography. You know, I have a trouble, I have trouble with some biographies sometimes because, uh, you, they only start talking about the stuff you've already heard about many, many times before. Sometimes they can get a little self-indulgent, which is the point, but you know, the people just don't end up as interesting as you think they would. But the book he wrote, man, he is one interesting dude. And I'm excited to finally give these a watch, seeing as he talked about them quite, a, quite extensively in the book. Uh, these are probably his most famous uh, movies that he made uh, before he came to America to start doing Hollywood movies. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a really nice set actually. Uh, and I think this is just a poster that they have here, and it's gonna take me forever to open this one-handed. It's actually, you know, it's just a poster on the one side. Oh man, but there it is. I love when I love when these Criterion's come with uh, posters, actually. So that's pretty neat. Uh, I will get that together later. <laughs> the Richard Pryor collection. You know, there's the toy, which I think is only rated. I want to believe it's rated PG. Yeah, there it is. I remember seeing as a kid, and my uh, friend used to always like to go to the scene where there's nudity in it, and I was always surprised. I'm like, how is this movie rated PG? But as nudity in it, that was before I knew anything about the rating system and how it has aged over time. The other two movies on here rated R. I was actually requested to review See No Evil, Hear No Evil, which is a movie my... I remember my dad, uh, after we saw the bigger 80s movies, he wanted to start going through some of the lower tier 80, 80s movies, and this was one that he remembered liking, but... I remember we never got to actually watching it, I think uh, because he remembered it's a little inappropriate. And yeah, it is. It's got some nudity. Um, the movie's fine. I, I could see why people would probably find it offensive today. Uh, I wasn't, you know, I didn't think it was as offensive as I thought it would be, but, you know, I think it was offensive in different territories rather than what the main premise of the movie is. There's other things that happen and I'm like, well, that's kind of messed up. <laughs> some kind of like sexual harassment stuff and eh, it's weird. I haven't seen Stir Crazy though and that's considered I think the best of the Gene Wilder Richard Pryor team up so definitely want to give that a watch but this was a request for this month and you should be seeing that this week. Um, 
Horror Classics, which is actually just Hammer Horror movies released from Warner Brothers. This is Volume 1. If you're wondering where Volume 2 is, uh, it never came out. They started, they waited a long time before they did any other releases, and they're, now they're doing them through Warner Archive, any of the other Hammer Horror movies they have the rights to. I mostly bought this because I am trying to complete my Dracula collection. Uh, and I believe this was the... Uh, well, there was the ones that all starred Christopher Lee. This was the third movie in the Dracula series that starred Christopher Lee, and I believe this was the fourth one. There was one that was made that didn't have Christopher Lee that was made right after the first Dracula movie, but most people don't consider that part of the franchise. And that's actually in the Universal set, so I actually I own that already. This also has Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed and The Mummy. And there's a couple more Frankenstein and Mummy movies coming out from Shout Factory. Um, so yeah, they're actually really starting to uh, get all this stuff released on Blu-ray, which is awesome. Hammer Horror has always had an issue getting released in the States because they're British movies, there's so many different people that own the rights, they can't just do one big box set like they have in Britain. Uh, but I'm excited that they're finally starting to get some studios to release some. Shout Factory's been doing a bunch. They have every Dracula movie now on Blu-ray, even the ones that Christopher Lee wasn't in. So, uh, yeah, I'm really into that. And uh, they're getting to work on Frankenstein now, too. So hopefully someday we'll eventually get, at least for the main horror franchises, we'll get all the Hammer stuff on Blu-ray. I don't know if we'll ever get every single Hammer horror movie on Blu-ray in general, but, you know, there's even smaller companies like Mill Creek that have gotten the rights to release some of those lower tier obscure Hammer movies, so I don't know, maybe we will get them all eventually. Open season scared silly. Oh, Ryan keeps requesting Sony animated movies and this is the final open season movie. For now, unless they decide to make another one. Ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, this is kind of a fun set. I don't own any Elvis movies, and these are Elvis movies that are only on DVD. I actually was requested to review Double Trouble for next month, so I bought it pretty early, and uh, yeah, now it's a two-pack, so maybe I'll just double feature them one night. I would like to watch some of the Elvis movies. I don't, I've never really heard people talk about them, but he made so many, and I kind of question if they're good or not. Who knows? Maybe they're amazing, and maybe they're of the time. But that's the thing, I don't really hear people talk about them one way or the, one way or the other, so, uh, yeah, double trouble though, so I don't know if they got a parent trap thing going on. I'm, I'm going into this movie cold, so we'll see what happens with that next month. And if you are keeping up to date with the channel, you would know that I reviewed Blank Check recently. Uh, this is only on DVD. This hasn't been released on Blu-ray. Disney doesn't really do a good job of releasing all their stuff on Blu-ray. Uh, they've been doing some of the stuff through uh, Disney Movie Club. Uh, they'll release them with no special features, and just like with this DVD, there's no special features, and it's only in full screen. I don't know if there's a widescreen version out there, I believe this was on Netflix at one point, I think there's a streaming option online, it's probably in HD, because that happens a lot, they'll, they'll release their movies in HD on streaming services, and it'll be in widescreen, but their DVDs and uh, Blu-rays will just kind of be terribly put together. Their Blu-rays will be in high quality, but you know, it's... It's a rare opportunity where they're actually released. This movie I don't ever see getting the Blu-ray release unless they get, you know, they start running out of the titles, but they have so many things yet to go on Disney Movie Club. And uh, if you loved Home Alone, you'll love Blake Blank Check. That's no. And this movie was terrible. Go watch my review online and you'll see. Uh, we got a lot of stuff this, this week. So uh, I have a big package in the mail coming as well, so. We'll have another episode next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. For only $7, you can get your own monthly movie review. Ask me to review anything I haven't already. There's also other perks like blogs, exclusive videos, and early access. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thanks so much for watching this video.